Hello there. Today I wanted to show you a classic Italian fortified wine, Marsala. So I have here a bottle of uh, Pellegrino's Marsala Fine IP DOC Marsala. IP standing for um, Italia Particulare. So my idea was that this was going to be a typical Marsala. What I'd forgotten is that Typical Marsala is really quite hard to define. Marsala is a fortified wine from the island of Sicily. And the DOC says that the grapes must be grown in the region, in the um, Trapani province, around the town of Marsala. But there's quite a lot of variation beyond that. The style of Marsala was actually created by an Englishman somebody called John Woodhouse who in 1773 came to Marsala and he'd previously been working in Portugal producing port um, and had also spent some time in Malaga in Spain looking at the way that they made fortified wines there and he was aware there was huge demand for this sort of style of fortified wine clearly he was interested to see if the, the local wines would, would fit that bill what he found was that the Local wines were cask aged and they used a situation called in perpetuum, which is closely akin to a, a Solera system in that you have barrels that are topped up fairly regularly with fresh wine but are allowed to age oxidatively. So Woodhouse bought 400 barrels of wine um, and had them shipped to the UK to, to sell. He fortified them for um, shipping which was something that wasn't done with the local wines and that would have increased their shelf life as well adding sort of eight litres of brandy to each barrel as a result created the style of, of Marsala. In 1896 he returned to Marsala with the idea of commercialising uh, production and distribution of Marsala and over the next couple of dec decades he and a number of other English merchants, producers and traders marketed Marsala throughout Europe and to the Americas. In 1833, the first Italian, Vincenzo Florio, entered production of, of Marsala. And then in 1880, you see somebody called Paolo Pellegrino, who had been a notary and grew grapes, had vineyards, set up his winery. And through a series of consolidations, etc., today, Florio and Pellegrino are the two principal producers of Marsala. Marsala can be classified in three ways, colour, sweetness and age. So as far as colour is concerned, you can have wines that are defined as ambra, which have become uh, amber, tawny I suppose, um, because they've been darkened by the addition of a cooked concentrated grape must. You have wines that are defined as oro, golden and more recently styles have been produced using red grapes rather than white which has been more traditional and these are labelled as Rubino. As far as sweetness is concerned you have three levels. You can have Secco which is anywhere up to 41 grams per litre of sugar. Um, you have semi so half dry which covers a range between 40, 41 grams per litre and 100 grams per litre of sugar. And then beyond that you have Dolce at over 100 grams per litre of sugar. As far as ageing is concerned, there are quite a number of categories there. Fine is the shortest period of ageing, so that's aged, that has to be aged for at least a year. Superiore has to be aged for at least two years. Superiore Reserva is aged for four years and then you get into more rarefied categories such as Virgine or Soleras which have to be aged for five years and then above that there are categories that are aged for ten years. Those are Soleras Stravecchio or Soleras Reservas and either of those can be prefixed by, by the word Virgine depending on how the wine's been made. So, having said that, how to define this wine? Well, firstly, it's defined as a fine. It's been aged in barrel for at least one year. The term IP, Italia Particolore, is a traditional old designation meaning fine. Pretty, yeah, pretty much meaning the same thing. 
The wine isn't actually labelled with this sweetness, although I have seen um, versions of this wine with the designation semi secco on the label. My understanding is that this has 51 grams per litre of sugar in it, so that should be semi secco. It's got 17% alcohol, having been fortified. And looking at the colour, I would suggest that that is almost certainly an ambra wine that has had some cooked must added to it to, to add colour and to add sweetness. This particular wine is certainly made from three grape varieties. Uh, you've got uh, Grillo, Inzola and Catarato. And there may also be a certain amount of a variety called Damascino, but different notes I've seen suggest that it is or isn't in there. The grapes are entirely grown in two areas, one around Marsala, the town itself, and the other in Mazara del Velo, which is slightly to the southeast of Marsala. The wines are hand-picked, they're fermented in neutral vessels, and I, I, I would assume this is fermented pretty much to dry before being fortified. The concentrated cooked must that I've described for sweetening and for colour, it would be added at this stage. That's called siphone, and then, then the wine ages in barrel in this in perpetuum system of a sort of a salera. And again, I would assume that this is going on in relatively warm conditions to uh, produce a sort of a madderizing effect on the wine itself and to, to add sort of nutty and developed character to, to the wine. So let's look at it a bit further. Firstly, You've got this relatively tawny colour, to be honest. It's, uh, um, I mean, that's quite actually quite dark for the colour of amber, as it were. It's, it's lovely and vibrant in terms of the colour. As I swirl it, as I say, the wine has 17.5% alcohol, so unsurprisingly, with the alcohol and the sweetness, there are some tears fairly readily clinging to the glass. As far as the aromas are concerned, the aromas are a bit restrained to be honest. There are notes of candied peel, marmalade, that sort of um, orangey note. There are notes of dried fruit, maybe uh, date, fig, that sort of note there. But And then there are slight hints of sort of savoury notes as well. So that's a rancio sort of effect that that's why, why I think the wine will have been heated. Almost a sort of slight touch of uh, bacon fat there. So let's taste it and see what we make of it. The wine has really good freshness and it's not necessarily a grapey freshness, it's a more sort of volatile acidity there. It's not marring it because there's, you know, there is a lift, but it's a there are developed notes in there, and yes, the sweetness, but the sweetness is very well balanced by that acidity. In in fact, I think you can see why, or I can see why, even with 51 grams per liter of, of sugar, this feels relatively dry. If this was a table wine, 51 grams per liter would normally seem relatively sweet. But there's a drying note, um, there's an almost a, a charcoaly note on the mid palate. The wine is medium bodied at most, which, considering it's got 17.5% alcohol, is a little surprising. But that's sort of, sort of the freshness, leaving it quite sort of light and lifted. And there are all sorts of these notes, sort of starting with um, treacle, toffee, those sort of burned sugar notes running through dried fruit notes, um, more fig and date than, say, sultana. It's not as concentrated as the sultana notes. Um, there are slightly smoky notes. There are uh, developed notes. As, as with the aromas, there's that slight sort of maybe savoury touch there coming, coming in. And then you've got these lifted notes of, um, sort of candied peel and a slight oranginess. I'm making it sound like quite a complex wine, but actually it's relatively simple. I, I mean, I think the flavour's lasting reasonably well. It's not faulty in any way, but um, this is an entry-level Marsala, and 
while nicely chilled, it would be very happily served as an, aper as an aperitif before or between courses of a meal. I think uh, the likelihood is that a style like this is, li is likely to be predominantly used in cooking. There are various recipes I've seen suggesting veal cooked in marsala or th ideas like that. Um, it's very regularly used in recipes. I hope you find that interesting. Thank you very much for joining us. If you have enjoyed the video, do please share it with your friends. If, you've, if you have any comments, either on the video or the wines, do please leave them below. If you'd like to, do sign up and follow us on YouTube. We're um, gaining followers relatively rapid, but it'd be great to have some more. Uh, but most importantly, I hope you'll manage to find some time to join us for another tasting really soon. Thanks again. Bye now.